Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about why I quit my dream job. Today I wanted to give a little background about um, why and how I came to be where I am right now. Um, basically working on a comic full time and uh, occasionally making YouTube videos. If you've paid attention or you've listened to any of these other videos, I might have mentioned before, um, but I used to work for Disney Interactive, and it's it's really what most people would call a dream job. You know, granted, it wasn't hand animating feature films like I had dreamed about when I was a kid. I was making video games, um, but nonetheless, I was working with a group of really amazing artists. I was making a decent salary. Um, which, by the way, if you want to know exactly how I was doing financially, I, I did a video about that. Um, and also, I got to go to Disneyland for free. Um, and, you know, working at Disney Interactive pushed me to be a better artist. I probably grew more quickly in my three years at Disney than I had at any other time in my professional career. I had a, a pretty flexible schedule. They were supportive of personal work and they had a cereal bar in the break room and video games and and you know ping pong tables um, sometimes it got really busy and I had to work long hours and uh, and stay weekends but it happened much less than you might expect uh, in this industry I mean there are really some horror stories of of the hours people have had to work in games and and I've really never experienced those you know I was a working artist I made a, a generous salary at a stable company. I got benefits for it. Um, you know, and I recognize that this is something that other artists dream of. So why did I leave? You know, while I was really grateful to be at Disney, uh, while I was there, there was always something missing. And that's not to say there was something missing, like something was wrong with the company or with the studio or, or especially not with the people that I worked with, but really that there was something that was missing personally for me and I think I can sum it up best with this quote um, from Walt Disney so he said uh, this about making art um, we don't make movies to make money we make money to make more movies and you can see this if you look into the history of like the Walt Disney studio it was not a profitable company it wasn't run to make profit you know Walt mortgaged his home to produce Snow White, but for most of the next decade, Disney really didn't turn a profit. I mean, he was really just about like pushing boundaries and trying crazy things. I mean, you look at Fantasia, that didn't happen too long after Snow White. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not one of these guys that's going to, you know, put Walt Disney on a pedestal. Um, but I think you do have to give him credit for being in the business to do new things, to try to make new art. And he wasn't really there to make money. He was a guy that you could really call a real visionary. And you can contrast that with what Bob Iger, who is the current CEO of Disney, said about the, um, the corporation's relationship between art and money. Um, and I'll, 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 include the link to this quote but anyway he said we know how to leverage or mine value from intellectual property probably better than any media company out there so to translate we know how to make money from art better than anyone else so I just want to say really quickly that just as I'm not interested in lionizing uh, Walt Disney I'm equally uninterested in, in demonizing Bob Iger you know to the contrary under his leadership I think Disney has made lots of good and some some great movies I think his his foresight is kind of unusual in the corporate world that he is able to look at things long term and is willing to invest in creating good art so that he can later um, you know mine it um, but I, I think the quote is still important because it, it sums up kind of the current cultural attitude we have toward art Art has become intellectual property, um, and the purpose of intellectual property is to be mined. And this is really an attitude that's permeated every discussion I've had with friends, family, and you know even other artists as I've uh, expressed my plans to quit. The first thing that almost everyone wants to know is, is how I plan to make money. 
but it's particularly distressing to hear this from other artists. Um, you know, over the course of, of my lifetime, I've seen some really amazing advances in technology, particularly as they apply to facilitating, um, you know, the art world. We've seen this uh, thriving digital global art community emerge. And the ever-present topic of discussion is how to make it as an artist. Everyone's getting together and trying to figure out, like, what's that path to be successful as an artist? You know, and you're going to find, like, no end to online courses, blogs, podcasts, forums, um, and websites devoted entirely to this alchemy of understanding and exploiting um, all the intricacies of the entertainment and the art, entertainment art business. So, you know, that can be comic books, animation, video games, or feature films. Um, and there's just tons of resources on the web um, teaching you how to break in and, and how to make a buck. And this is evident in almost all of my discussions with my art colleagues about life after Disney. Inevitably, the question comes up, you know, how are you going to monetize your stuff? Um, it's a depressing thought, but the truth is that we artists can't think about making art without thinking about how we're going to sell it. Um, there's really no place in our culture, or very few places, where you can make art without thinking about how you're going to sell it. Um, and, you know, my opinion is that for the most part, it really pushes us to make shitty art. I've now been working as a professional artist for over 10 years, um, and how much of my professional work am I really proud of? How much of it can I really call art? I remember once when I worked at EA Games, um, going to lunch with a group of artists. One of my coworkers made the comment, you know, imagine the amazing stuff this group of artists could do together, which is ironic because somehow working together for years um, hadn't accomplished this. So what was holding us back? Um, you know, anyone that has worked for a large artistic studio can attest that there is more talent wasted than used. And while every company lists things like boldness or forward thinking and excellence, as their team values or their core values or whatever you want to call them. The overriding value that runs any corporation is fear. And in almost any case that I have seen it, it's the value that wins out. And, you know, I'm not going to be too cynical about this and too, like, finger waggly about this because I recognize that there are some big economic forces that drive this. But, you know, that's really a topic of discussion for another time. But the overall idea is that this is a case of what the political philosopher Michael Sandel describes as uh, the crowding out of non-market norms, which is kind of a really, really fancy way of saying that we live in a society where there's no place for art outside of the market. You know, if you can't sell it, don't bother making it. Um, you know, or another way to say it, market forces push artistic possibilities into a box and then they flush the box down the toilet. When the market permeates every part of our lives, there's no room for values other than things like efficiency, shrewdness, and leverage. You know, there's that word again, leverage. Uh, you know, as artists, we go to our day jobs where we help prop up the intellectual properties of massive corporations uh, and then relegate our actual art to side projects that we hunch over you know, enervated and, and soaked with caffeine in the early hours of the morning. Um, you know, and it's just sad that this is the artist we expect to fuel the new era. This belabored, strung out, burnout, you know, quote unquote creative, who must take the few creative crumbs left after the day's end and, and somehow craft them into something meaningful. So the message we are being given is that making money must be our first priority as an artist. And then, you know, real art is like maybe if we can fit it in. Um, so that's why I quit my job. I wanted to create a space for myself where I could, even if it was just for a brief time, you know, maybe at the end of the day it will all just be a sabbatical. But I want to try and find some space to create art that is just not driven by the market at, in any way. I want to see what it's like to make art that is not informed by market forces. I don't want to think about creating intellectual properties. I want to take big risks. I want to create something personal and see if it resonates with others. 
I want to try and find a place for art that doesn't involve a winning pitch. Um, so I've really planned carefully. I've sp spent a long time thinking about this and preparing for this. I saved up and I left Disney. And now I'm here working in an unfinished basement, making comics and YouTube videos. Um, and it's a much bigger challenge than I ever imagined. It can be super depressing, isolating, and, and disorienting. I mean, that's something I never thought I would experience, but I spend so much of my time creating work that is just floating in limbo until I can compile it into meaningful chunks and, and put it online and actually get a, some feedback. Um, so it's a challenge. But I'm also incredibly lucky that I can even be in this place. I can afford to take the risk, so I feel like I have a responsibility to take it. At the end of the day, I want to make money to make art, not make art to make money. I really hope it's possible to do so, um, and I hope that in some way it will make it easier for others to do so as well. Um, I think my definition of a dream job has really changed now. You know, I used to think of, of a dream job as just this untouchable, you know, pure bliss that you could exist in where you're, you're creating wonderful, cool things. And now I, I understand a little bit more that, you know, creating art isn't about um, imagination. Well, it's only partly about Im imagination, but creating art is really about that intersection between imagination and reality. And that's the place I want to be now. I want to be in the unfinished basement. I want a little bit of the depression. I want the struggle. And in the end, I want to create some meaningful art. So that's my story. I left out a lot of the specifics about how I'm making it work. If you're interested in that, please uh, leave your questions in the comments. Please subscribe and we'll talk to you again.